Why are you so confident in this deal? Well, thank you, Taylor. Great to uh, great to be here and to be back. You know, uh, I think that uh, you know we hear a lot about fintech, and fintech is more about more than about uh, payments and wealth management applications. Uh, it's about more arcane areas of financial technology, like capital markets technology. And uh, this transaction, I think, really, uh, really reinforces several of the, the big trends that we're seeing in capital markets technology, the, the importance of digitization and data, the importance of simplification, and the importance of mutualization, where people are really uh, investing in the things that, that make them really unique and using third parties, using industry solutions for things that, that everyone needs to do, but that need to be right. And uh, you know, we believe in the long-term growth of, of, of capital markets. There's no real uh, leading technology player that's, that's serving all the needs of capital markets technology. Yeah. And, uh, and this really, really positions us to help make a big difference in that arena. I think I know the answer to this, Tim, but I'm curious uh, as to your thoughts here on the idea of sort of how we go uh, from a more fragmented capital market, uh, markets uh, in industry here, I should say, with regards to the services being provided, which was away for a long time. And now we're starting to see more consolidation and I guess more of a model that sort of a, you can get everything under one roof or at least most of what you need under one roof. And I'm wondering if you see that or you envision that as being the model going forward. I think I think remain there's a big opportunity for that and and it's incremental but today we're already one of the leading players in SaaS capital markets technology uh, there are uh, 19 of the 24 US primary dealers uh, are on our technology platform we clear and settle 10 trillion dollars every day and uh, but we're really focused on more quote the back end which is the books and records clearance and settlement side of things mm -hmm. activity is really focused on the front end on the trading on the uh, order execution and uh, that those that front end technology and back end technology traditionally has been separate and being able to bring that together will uh, simplify the technology for the industry and for our clients it also allows you to bring critical data from the back end into the hands of those front-end traders to make better trading decisions. In terms of being accretive to earnings, are you thinking of revenue enhancing or cost cutting as you look to reduce leverage and pursue further tuck-in M&A? Yeah, this is absolutely uh, this is absolutely about growth. It is uh, really it's you know the two businesses are very complementary. This is it really extends our franchise and capital markets. It really enables us to grow internationally. It almost doubles our international business and has great returns for our shareholders. So this business is, is accretive to our growth rate. It's accretive to our margins. It will uh, position us well to be at the top end of the three-year financial objectives that we give. We just had an investor day and we announced three-year objectives. This will put us at the top end. And it'll give us a nice double-digit uh, internal rates of return well above our well above our cost of capital. You have your eyes on any other companies, or at least you have your eyes on any uh, just I guess potential acquisition activity. Well, we uh, you know we are always looking for things. I think this will keep us busy for uh, for a little while, but uh, we've done almost forty acquisitions over the past ten years, and uh, this is the largest one by far that we've done. But it's one that we're very excited about. Finally, here, Tim, as you think about paying down some of that debt, what would be the uh, leverage ratio that you're seeking and by when? Yeah, absolutely. Traditionally, we have, uh, we're an investment grade company. We are committed to uh, remain an investment grade company. This will take us up from about two where we are now to about a little over three and a half. Over the next 24 months, we expect to be able to pay that down to remain investment grade, pay it down probably to about two and a half. And while doing that, still be able to maintain our, our capital allocation, which is to pay a strong and growing dividend in line with the 45% payout ratio, uh, to continue to do tuck and M&A, and of course, continue to fund our internal investments. So we think that uh, we can uh, uh, do this transaction, mm -hmm. we'll remain investment grade, we'll pay it down, and, uh, and we'll be a strong investment grade company in the future as well.